experience of the void. Hello, I'm Christina. Welcome to The Void 333, only halfway evil with my co-host, Joshua. And our very special guest, Tony Mott, who has spent decades in an absolutely like explosive moment <laughs> in the history of rock and roll, capturing moments on film in stills that feel like a whole show, like you've actually captured more time. Th that's a good description uh, of what, what I did, but I never thought I shot the whole show because in the days of film, yeah. unlike the digital age, you only got 10% back. Mm. So when you went out, you'd shot you know, four rolls of film. Good example would be Johnny Rotten with the Pill Show at the yeah. Horden Pavilion and the Halo Show, which became quite famous. Um, yeah, it's a great show and I love it. Yeah. Mm. Um, I didn't get much else that night. <laughs> that, 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 that was about it. The first tour I ever did with um, with a digital camera, Nikon gave me a di digital camera and I shot mm. Judas Priest. And at the end of the show, I got a sense I was cheating because there was so <laughs> yeah. much back. I've always said in rock and roll photography, you can't do this pissed. Digital, mm. you can't. <laughs> <laughs> Big Day Out was probably, I would say the most beloved rock festival in Australian, in the latter day Australian history, the I touring so, yeah. animal. Yeah. And, and, and it was also the only traveling festival in Australia that's ever happened, as in yeah. it traveled around the country successfully at the time. Mm. Uh, well, that came late, yeah. much later. Yeah. But uh, uh, Lollapalooza was the equivalent in America. Mm. You did all the cities, it was over three weeks. And if yeah. you weren't doing sideshows, it was five days in 21. I remember uh, Pono for Pyros, mm. uh, yeah. Perry Fowl just couldn't believe how many days off he was getting. Do they get up to mischief? Everyone gets up to mischief. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've heard some Al Jorgensen <laughs> stories that were quite colourful. Yeah, yeah, there's quite a... Yeah, yeah. That was the, 95, the, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, the great one with Al Jorgensen was when mm. um, uh, the, the poor girl who used to do the riders and she's going, what the fuck's a nap? Uh, 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 no, what's it called? I'd feel, Nappy? No, what do the Americans call it? What do the American uh, diapers? Yeah. And it turns out it was uh, Al Jorgensen needed um, yeah diapers. Um, uh, and oh. he, it's so exciting for and, me right now. He and Courtney got off to quite a bit of mischief. They were yeah. they, they hung out a bit. Well, my, my story of, of Courtney on that tour was uh, and ministry. So yeah. I'm shooting yeah. ministry, and I've met Courtney at some so point. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm on stage in New Zealand yeah. shooting ministry, and I'm on stage, side of stage. Yeah. Ministry is so loud, I've got industrial strength earplugs, yeah. and I'm shooting them with a long lens. Uh, and I'm in pitch dark, and I'm shooting, and then all of a sudden I'm aware of a presence coming next to me. I don't know where, and then all of a sudden I see it, it's Courtney, and uh, I'm just shooting. And eventually she said, shoot me, shoot me. And I'm trying to explain, come on, we can't communicate, it's so loud. And my lens is like this big, and you've yeah. got to be about 20 yards away from me yeah. to get in there. I'm going, yeah. wrong lens, wrong lens. And she starts to get pissed off that yeah, I'm not taking yeah, a photograph yeah. and she's flashed me the whole bit. Next thing I know, she starts to grapple with me <laughs> and she's literally about <laughs> to kill me. Yeah. And I was due to do a photo session with Hull the very next day in a, in, in a studio <laughs> in Auckland. And I'm thinking, well, that's the end of that then, isn't it? Yeah. Lobby the next day, oh, Motti, how are you? Good to see you. <laughs> vroom, vroom, vroom. It was just yeah. rock and roll. Yeah, it was just rock and roll. Rock. Oh, she's, just in a, she's more punk rock than anyone, it seems. She was pretty punk rock, yeah. and she got, she got the stiletto heel to the uh, head in uh, Selena's the night, the first night in Sydney. Yeah. Uh, Someone threw a stiletto at her. Yeah, it caught her right in the face, and that was a fifteen-minute show at Selena's. Yeah, that was right. fairly infamous at the time. Um, that was the first time because they came back later. They were, she was much more in control the second time. She wasn't mm. so bad, mm. but she was um, she was flashing her private parts on a fairly regular basis. Yeah, I saw them yeah. in '95. Yeah. 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 Ray J Harvey, yeah. what did she smell like? Just nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Polly. <laughs> Polly Jane Harvey. Can you, tell, can you tell me everything you have? Anyway, we, we went round the back of the uh, goal, uh, the uh, big day backstage, mm. and there's sort of like this area, and this ambulance was coming. So PJ's there, and she's sort of she's a really great poser. Yeah. She knows what looks good, and bit, and she's posing. Rachel, and this ambulance driver is so is like, and he goes straight into the wall. <laughs> <laughs> and she was saying, no, the ambulance. punchline to me is yeah. she, she kept saying. Oh, do you think I look any good? Do you think I look good? And when he went out, I said, oh, I'm thinking you're looking pretty good. <laughs> 58 dead people in here. Michael Hutchins, uh, that ended up on the cover of Rolling Stone. My first ever international shoot, Eurythmics. Beast of Bourbon in the gunnery. Chrissy Ampler, never forgave me for dressing her in a white slip. As she put it, she was a black slip sort of girl. I'd like to go back in time back to a special moment because you, you have been witnessed uh, a certain singer called Chrissy. You um, have a very close personal connection to the Divinals and the to Chrissy. The only reason I'm a rock and roll photographer is Chrissy Amplett. 
So wow. I was a French chef by trade. I worked in King's Cross. Sydney and Australia in general had the greatest live music scene in the mm. world. And mm. I was qualified okay. to say that because I've been mm. to London Tell and New York, again. LA. Tell me again. So, Is that really true? Oh, absolutely. Well, that's absolutely. what we absolutely. keep saying. <laughs> on, on Friday, yeah. Saturday night, you could see 60 bands comfortably. Uh, uh, and Surrey Hills and had 11 venues. At the time, before the Doyles were known, they had a residency. Lots of people had residencies. They play every Tuesday night for six months. Yeah. Piccadilly Hotel in Kings Cross. Yeah. So anyway, I, I went in. I used to go and see bands there, and uh, I saw the Divinals, mm. and I watched Chrissy develop into what? This is eighty three. Eighty two. Eighty two. They just, just done the soundtrack to Monkey, to Monkey Group, Group. but it yeah. hadn't come out. And then one night, I had a huge interest mainly through traveling. I'd been to um, 60 countries and I used to like to do portraits. Mm. And uh, I was watching the live on stage and thinking, fuck, that's gonna be difficult. All the lights going on off and she's running around like a banshee. And so I just took my camera. And I think I took my camera for about three months. And luckily in that three months, no one asked to see them apart from me because they were crap. I couldn't do it. Mm. And slowly mm. but surely, I worked out how you got it how you could actually make the, uh, you, you had to get rid of the, the light meter was irrelevant because it's going up and down. Yes. Uh, and then eventually Vince Lovegrove, who managed them, had seen me there at the front every night and he said, oh, can we have a look at the photos? Yeah. And I ignored him because I suppose semi-embarrassment. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And then he finally, he sort of pestered and said, mm -hmm. show me, and I showed him the proof sheets and he bought a photo and it became the tour post. And I think he gave me 20 bucks and a bottle of vodka and I was unbelievably happy. Yeah. And he told wow. me, oh, you, your name's on the door. And I was so <laughs> I was so green and naive. I just thought, oh, brilliant! Yeah. My name's on the thinking they got some rehearsal space. Around <laughs> and they just scribbled Tony Mott's name <laughs> on, 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 the, on, the, on the on the door. Yeah. And then he called me, paying to come in because your name's on the door. And I went, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I practiced my art of rock photography on Chrissy Ambler, which is <laughs> what I didn't know at the time was I was practicing on the greatest female performer I've ever come across. I've shot Beyonce, right. Madonna, Diana. Performer. Uh, yeah. perform she was completely unpredictable. Yeah. So you had no idea what was going on. I, I don't want to be negative about someone, but the first time I saw Taylor Swift, mm. um, the manager said, and he more or less choreographed exactly what would happen in the show, and it did. And mm. it was like, oh, wow. That's, it, it's like, I see, with Chrissy Amplett, you couldn't say, mm. Well, in the second song, she's gonna. You had no idea. She'd yeah, go off yeah. on, and she was a screaming banshee. Mm -hmm. um, she would uh, again. Uh, what I said previously about there's no pits, yeah. so you were wedged up against the stage. Yeah. And a lot of the girls used to like to put their handbag on the stage because they, you know they're rocking away. And Chrissy used to pick up, get the tampons out, get the diary out, and then as the girls lean out, she'd just go. She'd beckon them, beckon them. Do you want to come on my? I don't think you're coming on my stage. She used to put it on the drum riser and just go through it in between songs. And just, <laughs> <laughs> now she wasn't that's always sadistic. like that though, that's was she? Awesome. So did you start shooting her before she no, developed no. that stage uh, presence? No, by the time I started, I saw her perform maybe a couple of times and she was very much, she always had the fringe yeah. and I since found she out had the power she, she didn't want eye contact because she felt mm. the lyrics and if you go, if you study Diviner's lyrics, they are quite uh, they're hers yeah. and yeah. it's about her yeah. and then the band started complaining that there wasn't a lot happening on stage mm. and she went to the other extreme she went mm. from that to mm. just this what, what it was and then she was a screaming wild woman you often yeah. had you feared for her safety uh, for my safety everybody's safety she had no oh, there, there, there wasn't a whole lot of barriers or boundaries for her but compelling performer at the same time her and Mark the dynamic of that band was they were lovers on and off. Mm -hmm. So there was that dynamic. Mm -hmm. They wrote music together. Mm -hmm. So there was always there was a lot of conflict and mm -hmm. conflict's fantastic for a musical thing. Mm -hmm. that, that's yeah. all, that's all great for yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, and at some point after that album Desperate came out in America, they signed to Chrysalis directly. Yeah. There was a point when they went and they played New York and they were on the cover of New York Times mm -hmm. and the journalist described them. This is going to be the biggest band in the world. Mm. They make, uh, they, they're on the crest of a wave. Mm. Freddie Deman, who managed mm -hmm. Madonna at the time, got wind of this, saw them, mm -hmm. absolutely <laughs> thought, agreed, this is going mm. to be the biggest band. Mm. He quit after six months because he couldn't cope with Chrissy. Yeah. Now, this is a yeah. guy who's managing oh. Madonna at the height of her fame, yeah. and he found Chrissy difficult. That's the yeah. sign of what she is. Yeah. She was probably her own worst enemy, but it's always a contradiction of things is if you'd milded her off even remotely, you wouldn't have got that amazing performance. Yeah. Right. But at the same That's time, right. she, <clears throat> she killed her own career in, in lots of ways. Um, yeah. she, she, she fisted uh, Rennie Gare in the face, even though I, I, lo I loved her very dearly and she mm. was great. Mm. She never stopped intimidating me. Mm.
Bjork with the ex trying to capture the her eccentric. See, see, if that was anybody else, it doesn't yeah. work. But for yeah. Bjork, it's yeah. it's Bjork. That's Absolutely. who she is. Yeah. Marilyn, that's like I say. How can you not get a great? You know, the image yeah. is just in front of you. Tex on stage with the Tex grin. Yeah. Right. The Glimmer Twins. Who is your favourite? Um, well, oh, God, that's difficult. Um, they're just they're the Stones. <laughs> Henry. What's weird about that one is Henry at the Paddington RSL Club. That sort of doesn't compute. Can we talk briefly about Iggy? Can we take a one? Can you give me a... He's 68 when I took that photo. And he was by far the most energetic performer on the bill. He's Iggy, just being Iggy. ACDC, not going to a lot of trouble for the first session. <laughs> Strangely, it's, it's, it's quite interesting who you like as photographers. Yeah. And who photographers like. My hero is Penny Smith. Okay. Mm -hmm. She did the Clash's London Calling album cover. Got it. And, and the opposite of that. And I gather she was quite obnoxious to record companies. She wouldn't. She always used to shoot grainy black and white. Awesome. And without a doubt, Anton Corbin made a living out of her style. I'm sure. Yeah. And that's not knocking him in any yeah. way, because he's obviously way more commercial than she ever was. But she was my hero. She did lots of punk. Lot, uh, the Clash's album cover is the most famous thing. Um, but she wasn't very. She didn't get on with record companies very well. Um, so I really like her, and I have met her at a party. Uh, Mick Jones from Big Audio Dynamite in introduced me. Oh, yeah, no, I told her. She was completely unimpressed. Um, uh, and then <laughs> I really like Wendy McDougall in this yeah. country. Yeah. Uh, I think her photos are... I've always thought her style and the way she does things are great. And I mm. know her as a personal friend, so I know her. Mm. It, it's just weird. I really, and this is really weird that I'd say this, mm. I like Linda McCartney's photos. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, because they're really real. Yeah. That, that she's right. not a great photographer, but yeah. she's real, and I yeah. really like her style. Her book of her stuff, before she's married to Paul, she was shooting lots of bands, yeah. and I just like her style. Right. Um, Annie Leibovitz, to me, is the epitome of not a rock and roll photographer. No. <laughs> she's too stylized. I've I'm I'm actually, yeah. I actually, I've oh, worked on, yeah. I've yeah. worked on one of her yeah, shoots. Yeah, exactly. I've worked on one of her yeah. shoots, yeah. and she literally yeah. just fires off a couple of shots. Yeah. You yeah. set up for like yeah. half a day. She's, she's, so. a, she's almost like an art director. Yeah. Um, but. And, I'm not, and before we go any further, I don't yeah. want to knock Annie Leibovitz because no. she's obviously a great photographer. I just don't see her as a rock and roll photographer. Whereas no. Lynn Goldsmith, mm. who's probably the grungier version of Annie from New York, right. her stuff is... I mean, she's got the famous one of Keith Richards with No Drugs Allowed at, yeah. at, at, yeah, yeah, yeah. at Customs. Yeah. And it's just a great rock and roll photo. Yeah. Yeah. Annie would have a team styling it and doing that. And it's, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to star Keith. I want to see, yeah. I want to yeah. see her doing that in the pit at a regular show at a pub, just the um, Annie Lee Roots team. Yeah, just going and doing it. And then they're, yeah, good luck with that. It's the encore, and then she comes up and goes... So, so I, and I've got, I'm trying to think of the guy who was doing grunge, and I've forgotten his name. Danny Clinch. Danny yeah. Clinch. Yeah, I think true. he's out of LA, and I, I've never met him. I just like his style, and I always yeah. liked his photos. Yeah. Um, Is that unexpected? Is that what makes a great rock photographer? Is that, that like thing you wouldn't expect, or like that? What, what are you looking for? Uh, when I'm looking at others, when you're looking at uh, stuff as well. I'm usually quite envious of what it like. Like Bledwin Butcher, we were looking at his book yeah. earlier. Bledwin yeah. Butcher. I've very rarely seen a Bledwin Butcher where I haven't gone, oh, fuck, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, right. I, I, and I always look at his photos and think, he knows the go betweens. Yeah. As in, he knows what they're about. He knows yeah. what Nick Cave's about. He's in. The reason that I've been really successful is I'm not actually a very good photographer. I'm, I'm good. I'm not a great photographer. There's loads mm. of greats. But what I am good at is. If someone said to you tomorrow, you're doing uh, Slipknot, mm -hmm. I'd be listening to their music. I yeah. knew exactly yeah. where they were at. Really? And I had an empathy to them. And when I take a photo of Slipknot, mm. uh, I would meet Corey probably or the manager or yeah. whatever. Yeah. And I must turn up to a meeting with six ideas because I know he's going to yeah, get right. three. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. So you come up with three ideas. And the photo is a collaboration. So it's what, it's what, it's not what happens to you, it's what you do with it. It's been Thank amazing, you. Tony. The void. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> this is an experience of the void.